Tonight, we are going to talk about two different adult type diffuse gliomas that look similar on imaging and histology. And we have to look for subtle things to know the difference. So to know these subtle things, I'm going to talk about microglial cells, embryology and angiogenesis as well. So we are going to tell the difference between cauliflowers and bales of cotton by spotting the man resting. And the two tumors we're going to talk about were previously called primary glioblastoma and secondary glioblastoma. A primary glioblastoma is typically a necrotic tumor with irregular rim enhancement. And in this elderly patient, it is safe to say that this is an IDH wild type glioblastoma, even in this article before 2009, the discovery of IDH, because elderly patients do not get a low-grade astrocytoma that de-differentiates. This is a younger patient in her 30s, and she has a similar picture with a necrotic tumor with irregular enhancement, but this is an IDH mutant tumor. And this is another example where you can see that on the cranial slices there is a tumor with little enhancement, so you could call this a lower grade or grade 3 tumor. Whereas in the caudal part of the tumor there is irregular enhancement and this is the dedifferentiated grade 4 part. So the astrocytomas grade 2 to 4 are part of a continuum with increased cellularity in grade 2, positive for IDH mutation, nuclear atypia and uh, increased mitosis in grade 3 and in grade 4 you can see my, uh, necrosis and endothelial proliferation. And this endothelial proliferation and angiogenesis is what is going to tell us the difference between the grade 4 astrocytoma and the glioblastoma. So we're going to go back to the basics because any tumor cannot become larger than 1 or 2 cubic millimeters if there's no angiogenesis because then the metabolic demand of the tumor exceeds the possibilities of the tissue. So these new blood vessels are formed with help of white blood cells and in the brain there are different types of white blood cells or white blood cell-like cells. There are microglial cells originating from the yolk sac, and we already talked about that in the vlog about HIV encephalopathy. And there are macrophages in the blood that can um, go into the brain parenchyma. And these macrophages and microglial cells were called the Cerberus, so the three-headed dog that guarded the gates of hell of glioblastoma in an article in a neuropathological journal from 2021. And I think it's a very good analogy. The microglial cells migrate from the yolk sac into the brain parenchyma. And these are mice models where the microglial cells are green, embryonic day 13, 17, 19, and 20, with the cortical plate that we previously talked about and the ventricular zone below. And these microglial cells regulate the neural precursor cells in the developing cortex. And they even resemble radial glial cells with a similar bipolar shape. This is another picture from an embryonic mouse somatosensory cortex, where you can again see the green microglial cells having a close relationship with the red neurons. If you think of glioblastoma cells and how they are formed, they look a little bit like glial progenitors or like neural stem cells. And also on a larger level, it is similar. You have neural stem cells interacting with other glial cells and blood vessels. And you have in a tumor, you have cancer 
stem cells interacting with the blood vessels and the other glial cells to enable to change their extracellular matrix and microenvironment to spread. So in a glioblastoma, there are a lot of tumor cells resembling neural stem cells. And then there are macrophages and macroglial cells in the brain. And the macroglial cells, they do not have memory cells. So they see these tumor cells and they resemble neural stem cells. And they are programmed, the microglial cells, to help and interact these cancer stem cells and neural stem cells. So in the brain, in high-grade gliomas, the microglia and macrophages are not fighting the tumor, but helping the tumor. And in IDH wild-type glioma, there are even more macrophages and microglial cells recruited by the tumor than in IDH mutant glioma. In the IDH mutant glioma, the cells notice something's odd, so they're a little bit more pro-inflammatory microglial and macrophages. So this makes the IDH mutant glioma uh, more susceptible for therapy and have a little bit better prognosis than the wild type. And because of all these white blood cells, there's more angiogenesis in IDH wild type glioma than in IDH mutant glioma. And you can also see that on RCBV images. If you just eyeball it, and this was the patient we discussed before with the dedifferentiated caudal part of the tumor, there is not a very significant increase in RCBV. And if you eyeball a wild type glioma on an RCBV perfusion map, you can see that there is marked enhanced perfusion. And this has also been uh, demonstrated in a larger cohort of patients with gliomas and in both the high angiogenic part of the tumor and the low angiogenic part of the tumor there was a significant difference in RCBV between wild type and mutant tumors. We've talked a lot about astrocytic tumors now and about microglial cells and we're going to shift our focus to the last part of the glial cells, the oligodendrocytes and the oligodendrogliomas. Thanks for watching and I hope